Let us pray. God, may I be a vessel this morning for your word, that this congregation that I certainly don't know by name yet, that they know that you still know them by name, and uh, help them hear this word today in the sermon. Amen. The scripture reading today is Romans 5, verse 1 through 5. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord. History lesson. Each of Paul's letters have their own context. Sometimes we just assume what Paul says, wherever it is, is just uh, what Paul says. But... Romans is no different. It has its own context, and that's important to what he's saying here. Roman Emperor Claudius had expelled the Jews from Rome in about 49 AD. And at the time, the Jewish people and the Jewish Christians, there was no separating the two. So he expelled the Jews and the Jewish Christians from Rome in 49 AD. But Claudius dies in 54 AD, and the Jews and the Jewish Christians as a group come back into Rome. Okay, so... At, when they come back into Rome, now they are visiting and going back to churches that are full of Gentiles who are now hearing the word of God. So this is a problem, uh, literally and theologically. So Paul's writing to this crowd in Romans because the Jews had a long-standing belief that the only way you could get into heaven was by works of the law. And by evidence in Paul's letter to the Romans, that is not the case. We as Protestants now believe that the way to heaven is by sheer grace, the way we are justified. When I say justified, that means when we are made right with God. It is by sheer grace and by faith alone. So that is an obvious theological problem, and this is what Paul was dealing with in this letter to Romans. Paul's letter to Romans lays out Paul's theology like no other, and he never made it to Rome, remember. He had fulfilled, he said, his ministry in the Mediterranean, and he wanted to preach in the greatest empire on earth, and he wanted to preach the greatest news, but he never made it there. So this sermon's not going to be funny. This is a sermon about suffering. Now imagine suffering for your Christian beliefs in the time of Paul, like these Jewish Christians and these Jews that were expelled from their city. They've been expelled from Chapin because they were Christians. And that, Do you think you'd be here today at Lake Murray Presbyterian if you were hunted down in Chapin and stoned for your beliefs? I don't think we'd have this kind of attendance this morning. If you were the outcast in Chapin, I doubt you'd show up all dressed up and singing beautiful songs and eating those wonderful soups made by the Presbyterian women the other night. I doubt you would acknowledge Christ as Savior. But if you did in the time of Paul, you'd probably meet in back alleys and dark corners and small churches to avoid persecution. This is the Rome that we're talking about, and this is Chapin today. But we don't suffer, I've noticed, moving to the country in Chapin anymore for being Christian like Christians do around the world. In fact, people may disagree with us, but they respect us for the things that we do in our community and for the mission that we have and the money that we give. You look at the banners. These are, these are the things we do in our community. And Christian or not, most people in Chapin respect us for what we do. Most of our buddies If they don't go to this church, they probably dress up and go to some other church in our community. It's kind of what you do on Sunday. But I've been here three weeks, and this is what I've learned. Lake Murray Presbyterian Church suffers. I only know a little bit about this congregation, but so far I have heard stories about surviving genocide in Cambodia, losing a child in a freak accident, a husband drowning in a lake, colon cancer, lung cancer, vertigo, a broken knee, a mother-in-law that died, an unmanageable schizophrenic brother, pneumonia. We suffer. 
and I've only been here for three weeks. Maybe we started suffering when we were young. Perhaps we broke an arm, fallen off a swing. Maybe some of you were victims of bullying in school, had to get counseling for years, and maybe those scars still stick with you today. Maybe we lost a parent at a young age, or even when we were older, and we're still looking how to fill that void of a mother or a father. We had a friend died in a car wreck. Everybody was drinking. We don't really know what happened. I know at Lake Murray Presbyterian Church, we have been to the funerals of our children, unfortunately, our spouses. God, Lake Murray Presbyterian Church suffers. And I think most of us probably cry at home when we're not here under this beautiful sanctuary. Paul says, suffering produces endurance. Now, endurance at first I thought was a good thing, but it's not. Endurance, in fact, the Greek kupomone, quote, means more than endurance. It means a spirit which can overcome the world, not passively endure, but to which actively overcomes the trials and tribulations of life. The first thought I had was running a race. This is how we usually talk about endurance probably why we think it's an easy and good thing. But it takes training. It takes your body many mornings getting up when you don't want to and running through the cold, running when you don't want to. It it takes suffering to create the endurance that it takes to finish a marathon. It's hard work. And this is the kind of endurance that Paul's talking about. Barclay goes on. He says, this is kind of like a pastoral visit. Someone once said to a gallant soul who was undergoing great sorrow, quote, sorrow fairly colors life, doesn't it? And back came the reply, yes, and I propose to choose the color. That is hupomone, that is endurance in the context of Paul. It's not just strong, it's tested strong. It demands that you learn the lesson from the suffering that came before it. The pressure of everyday life, even coming to church this morning, it takes endurance from the suffering that you've suffered in your life. So a single mother, she's raising two kids, and despite the occasional reward for being a good mother, her life is mostly made up of long work hours, she's underpaid, she's overexerted, but somehow she's got to provide entertainment and social activities for her two children that rely on her for just about everything. If you go to this woman and you say, how do you do it? You know what she says. Well, you you just get used to it. Endurance. We endure more pain because we've been through it before. We can get through a race because we put our body through hell before. We just tolerate it. That's endurance sometimes. But if you suffer long enough, if you wallow around in your own self-pity just long enough, You just get used to it. That single mom will wake up at 6 a.m. every day. Her body's going to ache. Her kids have to go to school. But she already remembers to keep the clothes clean, to make breakfast, to pack the lunches, and get dinner ready. She'll show up at the afternoon soccer game with a smile on her face because she has to support her children. But you know what? She comes to this church once a week, and you know what she does? She prays for other people's suffering. Other people suffering, not her own. Endurance produces character. Now, character, dokime. This is not how somebody would describe your personality. That is not what I'm talking about. It's nor Disney or anything like it. It represents a specimen of tried truth. Nelson Mandela gets thrown in jail by his government. 27 years later, he comes out and is the first democratically elected president of the very government that threw him in jail character. Now, this couple, they've been together since just after college. It was always a little rocky with these two because they both loved to socialize and they had big fights in front of people. It was kind of embarrassing. They broke up a few times, but they got married. Half because they loved each other and half because they had a kid together. He always left the toilet seat up and loved to go fishing. 
and she told really long, way too many details in her stories at parties. But 10 years into marriage, there was some infidelity, and they almost divorced. And they got some counseling, but they worked through it. There was forgiveness, and they stayed together, and they put the kids through college. And now they celebrate 40 years of marriage right here in Chapin. He used to sell insurance, but now he spends time on committees at our church, and so does she. It's really funny. You never see these two apart. They finish each other's sentences. I noticed the other day they had written a huge check to send this kid to college, but nobody knows it. They didn't tell anybody about that huge check. They wrote it anonymously. Suffering. Endurance. Care. A woman survives years of physical abuse from her partner. She's in her early 20s. She finally leaves him, thank God, but this results in years of pain and agony. Luckily, some good friends help her find a doctor, and 15 years later, she's finally able to face the world again. And she's tough, actually, and now she can face the world. She's become an advocate for women in our community. She goes to really small private meetings in very small private places where nobody can see her, and she tells these women her story about suffering and endurance and how it built her character. How she endured those years of nightmares and seclusion and drug use and depression, and now she's able to face the challenges of everyday life. But one of these meetings, one of the women starts talking about Jesus, and she gets curious. So she comes here. She learns about humility and serving others and turning the other cheek and forgiving your enemies and loving your neighbor. And she builds her own character on the teachings of Jesus and the love she receives from this church. And she finally asks the preacher if anybody minds if she has these meetings here. And that's controversial because most of these women are poor and unkempt. We weren't sure if we wanted to have that kind of riffraff in such a beautiful building. So we formed a committee. Well, the committee vote passed. Well, she has her meetings here at the church, and every week she shares her story of suffering with these women and her endurance and her character building. She shares the gospel with these ladies. And some of them think Jesus is really interesting, and some of them are too hurt to hear it. But now she's known all over town as a women's advocate, and she's got a little office tucked up somewhere where I can't tell you, and she's got a drawer in her desk full of letters. These women are thanking her for her suffering, thanking her for her sufferings, thanking her for her endurance, thanking her for her character, but in so many words, if you read all the letters, there's one word in each of those letters, hope. Her character had produced hope in these women. That couple that was married for 40 years, that endured, they saw another younger couple and they sent them to the right counselor to save that young marriage. That's hope. That single mother, after years of raising those kids with an aching body, she takes a Facebook selfie at graduation and posts, we did it. That is hope. So this afternoon at 4 o'clock, they're going to ordain me to the ministry of word and sacrament. If you want to talk about hope, ask Morganton, North Carolina. Ask Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Ask Clemson, South Carolina. Drive up and ask Princeton, New Jersey. You'll be hard-pressed to find somebody that could think I'd be here in front of you this morning. But I realized writing this, my first sermon in this church, most preachers would use their first Sunday to preach about their own testimony, about how they specially suffered and they overcame overwhelming odds that were just unique enough to be just for them. But sisters and brothers in Christ... This sermon is about our testimony. This is about the human story at Lake Murray Presbyterian Church, suffering and endurance and character. And that produces hope. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, 
and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. The word of the Lord.